the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. When you walked at the head of your people, O God, and lived with them on their journey, the earth shook at your presence, and the skies poured forth their rain. Alleluia. Welcome to St. Michael and all angels for the service of spiritual communion on this uh, Thursday in the fourth week of Easter. Let us now have a moment of quiet where we bring before God the sins that we have committed by the things that we have done and the things that we ought to have done. Let us now confess our sins together. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in restoring human nature, you have given us a greater dignity than we had in our beginning. Keep us in your love and continue to sustain those who have received new life in baptism. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today to turn to the right page might be, might be a good start. Our first reading today comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, beginning at the 13th verse. Paul and his company set sail for Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they passed on from Perga and came to Antioch of Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. So Paul stood up and, motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you that fear God, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our fathers, and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, he led them out of it. And for about 40 years, he bore with them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance for about 450 years. And after that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a saviour, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had preached a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but after me one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I will sing of thy steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim thy faithfulness to all generations. For thy steadfast love was established forever, 
thy faithfulness is firm as the heavens. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him, so that my hand shall ever abide with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall cry to me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen and makes all things new. He has shown pity to all humankind. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Praise and glory to God. When Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples, he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, Blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of you all. I know whom I have chosen. It is that scripture may be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who receives anyone whom I send receives me. And he who receives me, receives him who sent me. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. I'm a bit, uh, a bit lost today with this Gospel reading, so I actually uh, went to a text. Louis, Louis, Boyer, uh, Louis Boyer's fourth Gospel. Wonderful uh, interpretation of John's Gospel. And he has uh, one of my it's one of my first stops uh, when we go through John. He has a wonderful uh, way of interpreting uh, John's readings. William Temple's readings in the in John's Gospel, another great commentary. Uh, not so great on this passage actually, uh, but Louis is fantastic. Let me just find the page because I didn't put a bookmark in. I do apologise. He's speaking about uh, the Last Supper uh, and. Um, the washing of the feet. And he speaks, uh, especially just a little bit before the passage we have had, uh, Louis says this, The evangelist's tone in the opening sentences is elevated to that of sacred liturgy. There, occur, there occurs also one of those double-meaning expressions he favours, that of what is translated to the end. It can mean to perfection or to the end, and undoubtedly, uh, the evangelist wants us to take it in both senses. It has been put, it is the highest pitch of love to the limit of being. Now Jesus, fully aware of his origin and of the purpose for which he has come, is going to complete the gift of himself, while the devil is putting in the betrayer's mind the criminal intention, making him the agent, agent of his own downfall. No hymn of praise ever had the tone and the calm of this announcement of the sacrifice. Similarly, the account of the washing of the feet put in here must be more than an, than an affecting memory. I really, I'm drawn to what he talks about. There's two things he says here that I really like. It takes us back to Maundy Thursday, and we've just been through this bizarre Maundy Thursday where we haven't been together to be able to uh, celebrate the Last Supper in the way we normally do and to have our feet washed. Uh, for me, myself, to be able to wash feet. Uh, he mentions here the opening sentences are uh, elevated to that of sacred liturgy. It does have that feel about it. It is wonderful how John does this. But then at the end of this paragraph, the account of the washing of the feet here must be more than an affecting memory. It is more than that. It is something so much deeper than that. We have to believe that this really happened, and it wasn't just some pleasant event that one of them just gone, oh, that was nice that that happened. There was great depth to what Christ was doing on this night, as we know. But 
We also need to take it that it was real. It really happened. Christ really did wash the feet of the disciples and said these things to those who were there and the whole work with Judas. Because of the Holy Week we have been through uh, and going through this online virtual worship, it has made, uh, I think, all of us look at what we do in church uh, in a different way, particularly the washing of the feet. This is something we do once a year, and we do it in this very, uh, I've got to be careful, uh, liturgical way. It, it's, just, it's not theatre, but it's borders on it at times, I think. It has great meaning, don't get me wrong, but it's quite, uh, can be quite stilted. Every church I've been in, there's, there's a difficulty with it. What would it be like for us if we went about our foot, our foot washing in a different way? What would it be like if we actually goes, you know what, we're, you know, Jesus says you should all wash each other's feet. What would happen if we did that? I'm not saying we should, but what I'm saying is that what would happen if we did? What would happen if we actually took the washing of the feet out of Maundy Thursday and did it at a different time? So to take the meaning of it, take the meaning of what Christ is getting at by washing uh, the disciples' feet, but taking it out of uh, the Holy Week tradition. I think we should do this this year. I think we should be uh, have a, a, a foot washing liturgy in our sometime this year. Take it out of Holy Week and do it at a different time to give it, uh, not to take away the meaning it has on the night before Christ going to the cross, but to give it another meaning of what it is to be a follower of his. What, it, what does servant leadership look like? What is it for all of us to know that Christ loves us in such a way that he would do such a thing. Just an idea. I, I would, I'm would. i very interested to see what you think of this. Let me know. Put in a message underneath. Send me an email. Tell me what you think about moving uh, the washing of the feet to do it at a different time. Just know this. We've missed out on it this year. We haven't missed out on Easter. Easter still happened. Christ is still rising. Uh, Christ still, ro still rose. Grammar. That doesn't mean we can't do this at another time. And I think it would be quite powerful for us as a community. And maybe some of you who have joined this community online to be part of this. Let me know. Send me a message. Put a comment underneath. Um, or send me an email. The Lord be with you. Well, let us now pray for the world and for the church. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation. That all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For everyone who is isolated and housebound. That we may be alert to each other's needs and care for each other in our vulnerabilities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our own families and we pray for our school with the students returning this week. We pray for our teachers and our board and our principal. We pray for all parents who may be worried about school returning and those who are still teaching at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are suffering from any kind of illness be it of body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those on our parish prayer list and those who are known in our hearts. Heavenly Father, we pray for your healing presence to be with those who are suffering. May your healing spirit flow through them to guide them, protect them and comfort them. May your love continue to surround them. May they be enfolded in your peace. May they not be afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we've loved, those who we've learned from, those who we've cared for and been cared for by. 
those who are now held in God's eternal and loving care. We remember those whose anniversaries fall on this day and at this time. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your saints, those who have been the light of Christ throughout all generations. Our patron, our patron Michael the Archangel, and to the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom we greet as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. At Tefano, we are the body of Christ. By one spirit we were baptised into one body. Keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. Let us pray. God our Father, we offer our lives to you this day. Give us the eyes of faith that in your risen life we may see your love at work in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all of the benefits you have given us, for all of the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. I, the Lord, am with you always until the end of the world. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you restored us to life by raising Christ from the dead. Strengthen us by these Easter prayers that we may feel their saving power in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at St Michael and all Angels for this service of spiritual communion. I hope that these words and prayers that we have said together have been of some help and guidance for you at this time. Please join us together again at 4pm for evening prayer. And tomorrow, big day for us, we, uh, we're celebrating Julian of Norwich, where we'll be having uh, morning prayer, spiritual communion and evening prayer with readings of Julian of Norwich throughout the three services. A wonderful day awaits us. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.